Hey everybody, Debbie here. In today's uh, Stratego analysis, we're going to talk about uh, martial blitzers. Now, martial blitzing is a tactic where a player brings down their martial early in the game, and they try to get uh, they try to catch you off guard and get maybe a captain or a major advantage real quick. They attack on either side, and they usually bring down. They might scout first and then attack whatever piece they scout with, with the marshal. And then they'll follow up with captains and colonel, with a, usually with a colonel. And they try to overpower one side to just get a material advantage early in the game. And hopefully they'll gain enough material that, that they can uh, swap out the rest of the game and win fairly easily. They also might hope to find, if you have a bomb in the corner, which where they blitz, then you could be in trouble. And they try to overwhelm that side, and, and they might even capture your flag. So usually when they have a marshal on one side, they have the general with a spy and a colonel guarding the middle. And on the opposite side of their marshal, they usually have lots of bombs and garbage pieces like scouts and lieutenants and sergeants so now the way I like to uh, uh, you'll, you'll see a lot of martial blitzers in the 300 to 500 levels and and what I like to do is if they're blitzing on us on the opposite side of where your flag is so if your flag is on this side of the board and they're blitzing down here I like to sacrifice my marshal and take their general and then follow up with my general and attack towards their marshal side. That's where all their high pieces are. So you want to attack where, the, where their marshal came from. And, and uh, usually you can... Uh, you can almost lotto because most of the time they don't have any bombs on this side. They might have a flag in the corner and two bombs, but usually they have an open flag. So, but uh, sometimes you can just, uh, what I like to do is just take my time and methodically use scouts and lower pieces to uh, check out if they're a high piece and then take them with my general. So we'll see what happens. This this was a pretty good game uh, that demonstrates how to uh, effectively beat a pretty good uh, martial blitzer. So let's get started. I'm always happy. So now you can see. Whoop, let me go back. We'll see what this person was. So this person you know 464 yellow and you can see you know 500 level player so I didn't think he was a a, a, a lot of work I thought he might have been a blitzer usually when they have a large number of games played they're usually blitzers because blitzers uh and they have a fairly high ELO if this was like 350 then I might think it's a lot of work but 464 it's it's probably a blitzer so they're not going to rush in uh, needlessly with their or uh, or hazardously with their uh, they're not going to go crazy with their uh, marshal they're going to scout and, and, and look for bombs so they're going to test pieces before they attack it so alright so let's get going here I'm glad they started on this side so I'm thinking already about a marshal blitz okay so now they hit this bomb with a scout like a uh, I, I tried a double vertical bomb on this side for a change. This uh, this setup is not really that good. This is when I first started, uh, when I was playing around with the flag on up top, and this this setup is really lousy. So so don't even. This is a terrible setup. So don't even uh, uh, try to play this this setup at all. You don't want to play with a flag up front anyway. So but um, when they hit this bomb, I'm happy, and then I hope they think that this is a bomb and a and a non-blitzing game. All right, so here we go. So I always pause a few seconds when they hit this bomb. So now I'm just 
I'm already thinking it might be a Marshall Blitz game, and sure enough, there's the Marshall. So usually when you, when you reveal a Marshall, you, you, you want to think about what you want to do. You really want to counterattack with your general. But when, when, when it's a Marshall Blitz, and they're coming down, I'd rather sacrifice the Marshall with the general and then and then counterattack with my general. So I'm just charging in here to see. And again, sometimes they might have this side bombed off too. They might have two bombs here and they might have two bombs here. Uh, but but usually the bombs are on this side. And the flag is either in a corner here. And sometimes they might have a, a, a uh, triangle here, a bomb bomb flag in the center. So I'm just scouting now for pieces, this captain, so uh, that my general can, can attack when he counters attack. So let's see here. And now I'm, I'm, so now this really, when you see the bomb over here now, this really lets you know that it's a martial blitz. And this is a very common pattern, so you have to get used to it when you want to if you want to get to the gold level, you're going to have to beat a lot of Marshall Blitzers. So, and I think the easiest way is to sacrifice the Marshall and then to counter with the captain, I mean, with the general and a colonel. So that's the one thing I hate about double vertical bombs is if a, miner, if a miner comes in and takes one and you don't have a piece here, he could come down in here and attack this. But a lot of times the miner doesn't want to do that because what's usually behind a bomb, usually behind a bomb is a sergeant. So they don't want to waste a miner on a sergeant. So if this wasn't here, this piece might go this way. You know, check out something behind the legs or check this piece out. They might not want to get this because they say, oh, that's probably a sergeant. So I got kind of lucky here that the miner didn't go down and get my other bomb. So there's the general. Again, that's the common structure, the pattern of a Marshall Blitzer. They had the Marshall over here, the general here, bombs over here. Now, now what I should have done is I should have uh, probably should have brought my marshal up here. You don't want your you you don't want your marshal to be revealed. If this could have been a scout, then if I would have moved up here, uh, this player could have moved back and forth with me, and I couldn't go forward because if I went forward, then that person would charge with their general attacking me and their spies over here. So. Uh, you really want to try to sneak up on the general with your marshal if you can. But luckily, the, I guess this wasn't a scout, or he didn't scout me. I forget here. But he didn't scout me. So you want to try to sneak up and make sure you're in the same column with the general. So that way you can uh, sacrifice and then start counterattacking with your general right away. Another important thing to do is when you're making your plan about attacking the middle here when you're getting your pieces ready getting the marshal ready getting the general getting a colonel over you have to pay attention what your opponent is doing over here because the marshal blitzer will be bringing up pieces over here and you might lose track of where the marshal is you always want to remember where the marshal is it's very easy to lose the marshal when you're concentrating you're putting all your attention on getting all your ducks in a row and then then you say, uh-oh, which one is the marshal again? You don't want to you don't want to lose track of that. I probably should have moved my captain up here. They may pretend this was a spy or something, but uh, too late for that. I'm just stalling. You want to try to make it as slow and boring for him as possible. 
so he has to bring all his resources down here and the longer he takes to uh, attack your pieces down here the faster you can go over and get to his pieces and see you can hold off the marshal and a colonel here with a colonel and a spy and that allows you once you sacrifice your marshal you can go in with your general and then if his colonel slips by you have your other colonel to take that and then your general can basically wipe out his army of, of uh, majors usually the rest of the pieces are the rest of the high pieces which are majors and, and captain and you get enough of them and then you'll you'll win the game and the other thing is, is that's important is you you have to make sure your spy is protected. You don't want to lose your spy when you sac any any time you any time you sacrifice your marshal. You you really have to uh, take good care of your spy. You don't want to lose your spy if you sacrifice your marshal. So I'm moving my pieces to safety because once I sacrifice a marshal, I can't rush in with my general right away because the colonel will slip by me. So I have to have a colonel up here and I don't want these high pieces to get captured. Stratego is a game of planning. So you have to make a lot of plans before you can do your attacks. So here, there goes the sacrifice. I take the general. One of these is a spy. Okay, that's a spy. Let me, what did I do here? Let me go back. Uh, okay. There we are. Oh, and I, now you can see I set this up. I moved this already over here. Because I'm lined up to find out, you know, if this is a bomb or it's a good piece. So it's a captain. And that's the spy. Now, I can't. I can't rush in and take this captain because this piece is probably a colonel, right? It's a colonel, spy, general. And if, see, if I would have swapped generals, the spy would have come up. I mean, the colonel would have come up with the spy here. So if I go here, this colonel is going to come down and start attacking everything in the middle. So I have to, before I can go forward, I have to, I have to get uh, my defense ready. So I have to push my... Uh, one of my colonels up in the middle here and, and get my major to safety so again this kind of sucks here that uh, this miner is going to find my my vertical bombs here so that's really bad but i didn't want to take him with my major because i didn't want to lose this major so that was kind of sad that i lost my double vertical bomb and my opponent is getting happier and happier because he's f he's found four bombs. If he finds, you know, the other two, then he can start lottoing everything, right? So uh, I have to really uh, attack quickly here now. My opponent's my opponent right now is thinking he's counting the bombs he's like oh and my opponent's probably frustrated because he knows it's a, this is the crap side he knows the weak side there's not going to be a lot of good pieces over there since he found four bombs already so he knows all the good stuff was over here but it's a little too late that's the thing with martial blitzing sometimes you find the good side sometimes you don't in this case he found the bad side so he's spending a lot of time trying to figure out well I found four bombs maybe I have a flag here with two bombs right you always have to think about that when you capture a lot of bombs if I have a bombed in flag it would be over here 
So now I got the captain, and this is probably a colonel. So I have that blocked. Now I have to position my other colonel to get him ready on this side. And I have to get my spy over there. But I have to be careful in this situation right now. I have to be careful with these lanes if I ever brought my spy out. You know, he still has two, two scouts left. And you have to have that spy. Once you sacrifice a marshal, you got to keep your spy. Because that's your advantage. So that's great. And that's always good when you, when you do this, when you do this tactic, you always want to move the piece up. You see a lot of beginners, they move their scout, scout this, and then that gives them a chance to move this piece out. You want to you want to get down there first with your high piece and then use the scout. Now you can scout it and this piece can't go anywhere. So, if we look at the at the uh, score here I'm up a captain and now I'm gonna be up a major so that's really good now I'm getting my colonel over I probably should have got this over earlier so that probably was a minor blunder I could have moved some of these pieces earlier but at least I saved my major Again, that happens a lot of times. You, you, you'll you lose a lot of games. You'll be concentrating on what you're doing, and you might not be concentrating on what your opponent is doing. You have to spend, I always, I always say to beginners, they should spend for every unit of time that you're thinking about what you want to do, you should spend three units of time thinking about what your opponent just did. So if it takes you a, a second to move, you might want to, pause three seconds, three, three extra seconds to think about what your opponent just did. You know, think about where they moved from and, and, and remember that, you know, you can attack this, this spot now in the future. It's, it's not a bomb. And uh, try to think about what they're doing because it's easy to get caught up in your own plan that you forget, forget about what your opponent is doing and you can easily lose where the high pieces are. You can lose the marshal, and then that can be so critical. You don't want to have to waste another piece to find the marshal, because in a close game, every single piece matters. So I don't want a lot of. I, I, there's no, I'm in no hurry. And this is probably a major. Since that piece moved, we'll try to find another piece that moved. Maybe one of these are bombed. Well, that's fine. And then you just keep on coming. I hope maybe this is a captain. That would be nice if this was a captain. Or its last major. That would be fine, too. So now I have a major advantage and a captain advantage, but I'm down two lieutenants and two sergeants so I have to be careful so I just moved my general over here I moved my general over here and that stymies all these pieces if this is blocked off he can't move any of these men and these pieces can't advance and as long as you know the two square rule uh, the marshal is on this lane and I'm here I'm fine if he goes down you go up if he goes back up you go back down and just stand your ground here Now, I don't think he, I don't think my opponent attacked this bomb, so he still might think he. I bet you he thinks my flag is in the corner with two bombs. 
and he can lot all these pieces. He just has to avoid the spy. Unfortunately, my my major is stuck down here. This was a bad setup. I don't. I shouldn't have my major down there. But I think my opponent thought this was a crap piece. He probably thought it was a a scout or or a miner or a sergeant. So that's the one advantage having a high piece on a back row. They think it's a bad piece, a low piece. And the other, the other bad thing about having the major here in the corner is now my opponent knows I probably have a, you know, I do have an open flag and I don't have two bombs here. So, but now, now my opponent doesn't know where the bombs are. If they're not here or here, where are my bombs? So that was really good. That really gave me an advantage now. Now I have a major and a two captain advantage. And as long as I protect my spy, I'm in good shape. I, maybe I should have moved up pretend that this wasn't my spy. Maybe this wasn't the best move. And I'm not so sure that was such a good move either. Maybe I should have moved this way or maybe I should have moved this way pretending that this was my spy and then I could have moved my spy down because you don't want the person to to get by, to go down, and then down here, and then I'm blocking my spy, and then the, the marshal could wipe out all these pieces. That would be no good. So I test that. So that's not the flag. You know, every once in a while, the f usually the flag is on the marshal side. So that was a that was a good test. So, but then the flag probably is here. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Flag probably. And then the game ends right there. Uh, the marshal hits the last bomb. So he found he found all six bombs. So that was a pretty good game. Uh, it was a pretty pretty good marshal blitzer. Not a great marshal blitzer, but uh, but an experienced marshal blitzer. And um, it wasn't that stressful a game. And uh, if you you you'll play these, like I said, if you want to get to the platinum level, you're going to play hundreds of games against marshal blitzers. And I, I think the best the best way to do it is exactly what I did here is uh, is you sacrifice your marshal and then then you start slaughtering all the pieces with the with the general. But take your time. And that's another reason you want to have lots of scouts in the middle and the, near the center. Near your general, because your general is usually your counter-attacking piece. And it's nice to have the scouts available. See, if you use them up early in the game, then when you really need them, you're kind of screwed. And then you have to bring up a sergeant, and it takes a long time to, to find a piece. And then now sometimes if you're desperate, if you're... if Let's say you have a flag here in the corner or a flag over here where they're martial blitzing. You might just lotto uh, with the general, and then if you hit a bomb, follow up right away with the colonel. Uh, you usually can get away with that, and a lot, like I said, a lot of times the marshal blitzers will have an open flag, so you can do that. So I'm going to show you a whole bunch of other uh, marshal blitz games. This is, but this is the basic way of uh, of doing it. Uh, 
This I, I would give myself a, a B on this game. I didn't play it perfect. It's hard to play a perfect game in Stratego. But I played it well enough. And uh, and eventually my opponent, you know, he found he found all my bombs, right? He found the bomb at the end. And I scouted his bomb and then he found mine and it was over. So we'll do some more games on uh, Marshall Blitzing and hopefully you'll learn now uh, how to beat them. Don't be uh, startled when they come come down with their with their marshal uh, and just uh, you know bring your marshal up to the center follow with the general and the colonel and then use your other colonel and spy to hold off the uh, marshal and colonel on the side and you should have a great chance of uh, beating the marshal blitzers all right thanks for watching bye